when life buries you in zucchinis, make zucchini relish. Hey guys, I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to the channel. If you're interested in prepping and self-reliance, then you're going to want to hit subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because you're not going to want to miss any of our upcoming content. If you've ever planted zucchini in your garden, you know that once it starts producing, it just produces and produces and produces and you get more and more and more zucchini, more zucchini than you know what to do with. Maybe you don't even have a garden, but you have a neighbor who produces more zucchini than they can eat and drops it off on your doorstep. We have been getting so much zucchini and also these yellow squash. Some people refer to these as yellow zucchini. I had to do something with all of the bounty. So I decided I was gonna try my hand at zucchini relish, which is something that I have never done before, but my mother used to make zucchini relish when I was a child. And I remember having that zucchini relish with dinners and I really have great fond memories of it. Now I did call my mom and we talked about it and she couldn't remember exactly where her recipe came from or exactly how she did it. So I decided to start searching the internet and look for a recipe that I wanted to try. And I found one that looked amazing. And it turns out that as I was making the relish, you know, just with different things that I did or didn't have, and I changed things up a little bit and kind of combined a few recipes. So I kind of ended up with my own creation, but I'm definitely going to link down in the description box. I'll link to the recipe that I started with because it is really an amazing looking recipe. And I'm also going to put how I ended up making my relish because I think it came out absolutely delicious. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start by dicing my zucchini up really small. I'm gonna use zucchini and some of these yellow squash and these zephyr squash that we have here, these bicolored. Now this, I'm not sure if this is gonna slice too thinly, but let's give it a try. Yeah, I think these are gonna be too thin of slices, so. I'm just going to slice these by hand. I could get out my other mandolin slicer and make thicker slices, I believe, but it'll be just as easy to do the slices by hand and then chop them in this. I love these rata knives. These are so sharp. I got them from a fundraiser, a kid's fundraiser. So you can see how this is set up. This has this little grid slicer and then you just push this down and it pushes them through and it cuts so well. This is amazing. It also has uh, measurements on the side that tells you how much you've chopped. I'm telling you this is like magic. Wow, that quickly I've got about almost almost four cups of zucchini in here from that one zucchini. So I guess we'll try some of the zephyr squash now. Look how nicely those are diced. That is amazing. I need eight cups of the zucchini and I'm almost there. So next I need some bell pepper, any color, but the brighter the better, red, orange, yellow. It also comes with this little claw thing to help if it gets clogged up at all. The peppers are a little bit harder to push through and you definitely want to have them skin side up. But 
it definitely does the trick. Now, if you have a hard time with this thing, then you just need to go a little bit stronger. Don't pussyfoot around this. Just go at it with confidence and it'll go right through. So there's my two peppers, all chopped up and ready to go. Now you're supposed to mix everything together in a large non-reactive bowl. Now by non-reactive, that basically means not metal. You're gonna need glass or plastic or maybe a, some sort of ceramic, but I think the only thing I'm gonna have that's big enough for that is plastic. And for some reason I can't find any of my large plastic bowls right now. Um, this is all I can find. I think all the extra bowls are probably holding excess produce in the spare fridge. So we're gonna go ahead and use this large Rubbermaid container. There's all of our squash, all of our peppers, and I need one cup of chopped celery. We will give this a try. So it may not be good for celery. So we will do the celery by hand. Okay, so after employing the knife, we now have a cup of celery to add to our mixture. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chopped up vegetables and we're gonna add a quarter cup of canning and pickling salt. And we're going to mix that right in. Now make sure that you use something like canning and pickling salt, or you can use a different type of salt as long as it's one that has, you know, no additives, nothing added to it. It's just a pure salt. Now we're also going to go ahead and add two cups of finely chopped onion into the mixture. And this could be red onion or white onion. I happen to have some nice white onions here, so that's what I'm going to use. Now to do these onions in the chopper, all you really need to do is cut them in half. Just put the half right on there and push it through. And you can see how that made little cubes of onion because the onion has the layers, so that forms the other cut and makes nice cubes. Now that is probably a little bit more than the two cup mark, but that will be all right. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to cover this with cold water and we're gonna let it set for at least an hour and up to six hours. Now the purpose of this salt water soak is gonna to be to draw the excess moisture out of these vegetables. And you can already see that just with the salt, you can see that liquid starting to form that's going to draw the liquid out. Now some recipes have you just set it in the salt and nothing else and it draws the liquid out. This recipe calls for adding some water and making a salt water brine. All right, so now I've got the water in here. So now this is soaking in brine. I'm just gonna use my lid and not snap it on tightly, but I'm just gonna use it to cover it up so that nothing can get into here while this is sitting for one to six hours. Now don't fret about the amount of salt that went into this because this is rather salty right now, but this is going to end up being drained and rinsed. This is really just to draw out the excess moisture. All right, so after this sat in the brine, I did um, rinse it and drain it well, and then I just squeezed it really hard and the water came out. It reminded me of squeezing the water out of frozen chopped spinach when you thaw it, and that is one of my least favorite kitchen chores. I absolutely hate doing that for some reason. That's why I'm so glad that I have my freeze-dried chopped spinach to use now. But I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients in to this pot right here. We're gonna start with three cups of sugar. There's one two, three. Next, I'm gonna add some vinegar. We're gonna add two and a half cups. Now, the recipe that I was trying to follow was calling for half um, rice vinegar and half white vinegar. I found that I didn't have enough rice vinegar to do that. I only had about a half a cup. So I did add the half a cup of rice vinegar, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make up the difference to two and a half cups with the white vinegar. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all stirred around. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add two teaspoons of mustard seed. Now this recipe also calls for ground mustard as most of them do, and that is one thing that I am out of right now. It's something that I've used a lot in casseroles, like breakfast casserole and macaroni and cheese, and I find that I don't really 
notice any difference in flavor when I don't use it, so I just stopped buying it. But I do have some on order, because for things like this, I think it's a little bit more important. But we're gonna go ahead and do this without today and see how it comes out. So it would have been a teaspoon of the ground mustard. I am gonna add a teaspoon of cloves. Now I have these um, measuring uh, spice holders that I use that have a quarter teaspoon for each click of the dial. So I'm gonna open up the bottom, give it one, two, three, four. And that would be a teaspoon. And then I'm also going to do about a half a teaspoon of turmeric. That will give a nice bit of a yellow uh, color to this as well as a little bit of flavor. So other than the mustard powder, which we don't have, that is it for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the stove and get this simmering. All right, here it is. Now, I think this is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful condiment. I have seen plenty of recipes where the vegetables are shredded rather than chopped, but I really love the way that they look when they're chopped. So I asked my mother how she used to make hers and she couldn't actually remember. All right, so now this beautiful pot of veggies is simmering. So I'm gonna keep this um, simmering for about 45 minutes is what the recipe says until it thickens. So we're gonna see um, how this looks as we go along. So I'm gonna keep track of the time. All right, this has been simmering now for 45 minutes and you can really see how it has thickened up and simmered down. The brine has darkened and thickened and everything has really come together. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little taste test and then ladle it into jars. Now, this smells amazing. I can't even explain to you how good this smells. All right, so we've got our hot relish here all ready to go. I've got hot jars. And my canner is behind me with the hot water all ready to go. I've got my favorite canning funnel with the headspace markings on the collar. And we're going to go ahead and fill these jars to within a half an inch of headspace. All the jars are filled and I've just got some very hot water on my clean paper towel. I've been using uh, hot water as opposed to vinegar to wipe my rims lately and it's been working well. All right, so now we're going to get our lids on. Right, and then the other thing that I have been doing lately is using this tool to tighten my bands, and that's been working really well. Just get them started, and then put that down, and just turn it just until the arrows line up on the handle. Then it's ready to go in the canner. All right, so now these are ready to get lowered down into the canner. We will bring it to a boil and process this for 10 minutes, and that's for half pints. All right, this is boiling, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for 10 minutes. Now that is for half pints, and if you were doing pints, you would do 16 minutes. Go ahead and put the lid back on. I am going to turn the burner down just a tad so that it will still be boiling but not out of control. All right, 10 minutes has passed and our time is up. It's time to get our jars out of the canner. And there's our beautiful relish. All right, guys, now that all is said and done, all of my jars sealed, and now we have eight beautiful half pints of this gorgeous zucchini relish, which is also absolutely delicious. I am so excited to have this on the shelves. This was a pretty small batch, 
and we still have plenty of squash so I think I'm going to be making another few batches because this is going to be great for so many things for hamburgers and hot dogs throughout the summer it's going to be great on sandwiches mixing up homemade tartar sauce it's also going to be a really fantastic gift I love giving homemade home canned gifts with the things that we create in the kitchen I hope you found this video useful or at least entertaining don't forget to like share and subscribe if you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a zucchini emoji down in the comments. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.